Okay, so you want to talk about DNA basics. You want to learn the basics. Maybe you're brand new to uh, DNA research or brand new to genealogy in general. Regardless, whether you're new to genealogy or not, there's going to be a little bit of something for everybody in here. So even if you've got some basic understanding of DNA, I highly recommend that you watch this video. All right. So one of the things that we're going to talk about today is uh, basic understanding of DNA. We're going to talk about the different DNA tests. We're going to talk about DNA companies and then how we can use that for our family history. And so we're going to unpack a lot. And well, you know what? If this is your first time here, you may not know who I am. My name is Connie Knox. I am a lifelong genealogist here to help you go further faster and factually with your family history research. We're going to jump into all of that coming up next. Okay, there's a few things you should know before we get started, and one of which is you should expect surprises. If you've not taken a DNA uh, test before, you might want to just be mindful of the fact that there might be some hidden surprises in the family tree. You never know. It seems to happen in every family at some point. Uh, there are many testing companies. In fact, there are pretty much four uh, big testing companies. There's a lot of newer ones on the market, but we're going to primarily talk about the big four. Okay. So here's the basics, right? We're not going to get into a whole lot of science, but this next say 30 seconds is going to be your science lesson. If you're not familiar or have not been in high school for a long time, here's the DNA lesson. So we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, right? So we inherit one from each of our parents, right? So the men they have an X and a Y chromosome, whereas women have an X and an X chromosome. So this can be helpful when we are trying to do different types of strategy for family history. So we're going to get into how this helps us here in, a, in just a few minutes. But um, one of the things that you should know is there's also the mitochondrial DNA which helps us with the mother's line. We're going to talk more about that here in a minute. All right. So before we really jump into it, one of the things we want to do is identify the problem. So when we're looking at your family tree, right? And we're trying to figure out exactly what's going on. Maybe we've got a problem. We're trying, we're trying to use DNA for a reason. Now, a lot of people take a DNA test just for the fun of it. They want to see what the ethnicity results are, but DNA can be extremely helpful in solving problems. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is identify what that problem is. So for example, here, if for example, we are missing a grandfather on the father's side, so that would be your paternal grandfather. Um, we can use different strategies for that. We can use autosomal DNA. We can use Y DNA. We'll talk more about all that technical jargon here in a minute, but you kind of want to identify what the problem is. Okay. All right. So now, in this scenario, it could be a grandmother on the father's side. So that would be a paternal grandmother. Okay. So we've got, you know, on the father's side is paternal and on the mother's side is maternal. So we're going to talk maternal and paternal a little bit more here shortly. Okay. So basically long story short is identify the problem. Okay. So there are three common DNA tests that we use for genealogy and, uh, so they are an autosomal DNA. Now an autosomal DNA is everywhere. Everybody has it. Ancestry has it. My heritage has it. All these guys have it. And so that is kind of the, uh, the, the mainstream DNA test that most people take. There's also a Y DNA test, which as we talked about briefly, looking at the chromosomes, only men have Y DNA. So this might be helpful for finding, uh, fathers. And then we have the mitochondrial DNA, which looks up the, the mother's, mother's, mother's line. And we'll talk more about that, but that could be helpful for that situation. So we've got three types of DNA. Now, most companies only have the autosomal DNA and we'll get into that more here shortly. So with autosomal DNA, what's really cool is it kind of gives us a shotgun blast view of the entire family tree. Okay. So we can kind of see 
everything in the family tree up to a point. All right. But you have to remember that you only get 50% of your DNA from your mother and your father. So as we are looking at the family tree, right, we get 50% from mom, 50% from dad, which means that we get 25% of the DNA from our grandparents. So that's represented here in the red numbers. But if you look at the white numbers, that's what we're leaving behind. So we don't inherit everything with autosomal DNA. And especially with our grandparents, we're leaving behind more. I mean, we, we're not inheriting 75% of their DNA. So as we go back in time, in generations, we're losing more and more uh, DNA from our grandparents within ourselves, okay? This is kind of representative of, of where we are when we're looking at the big family tree. So this is kind of looking up the family tree. So here you are, you get 50% from dad, 50% from mom, 25% from our grandparents. We get 12 and a half percent roughly. Remember these are not exact by the way, they're, they're, they vary slightly, but we get about 12 and a half percent from our great grandparents, about 6% from six and a quarter from our two times great grandparents and so on. You get, you can divide by two, right? As we go back each generation. All right. So the three uh, DNA tests, we're now going to talk, that was kind of a brief overview of the autosomal. So now we're going to talk about Y DNA. So with Y DNA, a hundred percent of the Y DNA is handed down from father to son. So when we look at that in the opposite direction, if you're male, you have 100% of your father's Y DNA and your grandfather's Y DNA and your great grandfather's Y DNA on up the paternal line, but only the paternal line, okay? So this gives us a, a, a great little example of Y DNA. So here we've got the family tree and the grandfather in this case is handing down his Y DNA to his sons but not his daughter, okay? And then that is handed down to their son. So if you are one of these people down here, you can know that you have 100% of the Y DNA of your grandfather, okay? So now this becomes very helpful when we're trying to work on brick walls as I was doing in my family. So by the time DNA came around, my father had passed away and I didn't have that opportunity to have that. So I had a male cousin take a Y DNA test. He is a descendant of Henry Henley here. And I had a brick wall here and here. So using Y DNA in combination with autosomal DNA, I was able to pretty much solve this, um, brick wall because, uh, Henry here did not know It actually went by Gus. He did not know who his father was. And so by using Y DNA, it was, I was able to help solve that, um, problem. And I'm pretty sure that Joshua Davis or one of his brothers is the father of, of Gus here. We know for sure that Joel is because there are other descendants on the autosomal and on the Y DNA that descend from Joel. Um, but I'm not, I would say I'm 90% sure of who the father is here. Um, but I'm still working out details with, uh, traditional genealogy along with others, but because there are several brothers in this family, it could be any one of the brothers because they all inherit the exact same Y DNA. Okay. So I'm just showing you that as an example of how Y DNA can work for you. So that was my hypothesis and I still have, uh, this gentleman marked as a hypothesis in my family tree. Um, and you know what? I may never know exactly which brother it is, but I do, I can continue on up the line because I know that Joel Davis is, what is that? Great, great, great grandfather. All right. So let's move on now to mitochondrial DNA. Okay. Now, mitochondrial DNA is kind of cool because it goes up the mother's line. So with a mother's line, the mitochondrial DNA is handed down from mother to both female and male children. 
Now the female will continue to hand it down, but the male will not. So as you can see here in this crazy tree chart that I created, uh, the red line there that is probably a little difficult to see is showing you how m myself, for example, if I'm over here and my mother has handed down her mitochondrial DNA to me, I have the same mitochondrial DNA for generations and generations and generations. Uh, just on the female line though. Just on the mother's 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 line. Okay, so with mitochondrial DNA, here's another uh, visual of how that might look. So the mother hands it down to both uh, her male and female children as represented by blue and pink. And then the female will continue to hand it down, but the male does not, okay? All right, so now you probably have a stack of questions uh, and you're thinking, oh, okay, Connie, how on earth does this help me with my family tree? And I still don't get it. And okay, great little lesson there, but what do I do with my DNA results? And how is this going to help me with my research? So uh, here we go. Hey, we're going to get back to that video here in just a moment, but I want to let you know that Genealogy TV has a website, a newsletter, and a Facebook page. Links for all of that are in the show notes below. All right, let's get back to it. All right, I get it. It's still confusing. So when you get your DNA test results back, you're going to get three basically buckets of information. Definitely on Ancestry and MyHeritage, other companies that might look a little different, but... So you have your ethnicity estimates, right? <clears throat> These are just estimates. They change every year. So please don't put a lot of weight in the ethnicity estimates. We're going to talk just briefly about ethnicity estimates here in a minute, but I'm just telling you they're estimates, okay? And then you've got the DNA cousin matches. This is where all the magic happens, uh, and this is where we do most of our research. So then we have visualizing possible relationships, which comes in the form of through lines on ancestry and the theory of uh, relativity on my heritage. And so those are kind of just giving you a sense of how you might be related to your DNA cousins. Okay, so let's start with ethnicity estimate. With ancestry, and I'm gonna kind of show you ethnicity here between ancestry and my heritage. Ethnicity estimates are based on sample sets. They're based on a reference panel. So they've gone out, all the companies that are doing these ethnicity estimates, they've gone out deeply, you know, they've gone out there and researched, they found deeply rooted people in certain areas of the world and they are using them as a reference panel, okay? And then they are comparing all of us to the reference panel. Well, the reference panel is different on all companies, first of all, and so you're going to get different results on different companies. For example, here are my uh, ethnicity estimates from Ancestry, and these are my ethnicity estimates from my heritage. Now, the other thing that's different from company to company are the regions. If you'll notice here, uh, there's, for me anyway, there's only three regions, Scandinavian, North and West European, and English. Here we've got several, on Ancestry, several different regions. Point being is, Different reference panels, different regions mean different ethnicity estimates. And one of the things that I really wish Ancestry would do, and all of them would do, is put estimate in front of ethnicity. So it's like an estimate of your ethnicity instead of ethnicity estimates. Because really, to me, the stronger word is estimate. That's all I'm going to say about it. Just know that they're really... Uh, just estimates. They change all the time as the reference panels grow, as they learn more, they continually update them. Okay. All right. So now we're going to talk about uh, DNA cousin matches. And this is where the magic happens. This is where the pot of gold is. All right. Before we get into this a whole lot, I do want to remind you, because I know this is a lot to digest. There is a handout for this, for the information access level channel members and for the Patreon folks. And uh, it can be purchased at genealogytv.org. Um, here's some information about handouts, and then we'll get back to the DNA cousin matches. There are three ways you can get the handouts. Now, the first way is to join the channel membership here at the information access level channel membership on the YouTube channel, and then go to the community tab, and you'll find the posts that have the handout links in there. All you have to do is follow the link and download the handouts. Okay. 
Now the second way is over at Patreon. Now at Patreon, if you're at the happy dance level or higher, uh, you can get the handouts. Those come directly to you in an email every time we announce the new video that has a handout with it. You'll also get early release with that membership. All right, and then the third way is just to go over to genealogytv.org and click on the handouts tab and you can find all the handouts there for individual purchase. So uh, I hope that was helpful. The handouts really do support the channel and for that, I thank you. All right, so now we're gonna talk about uh, DNA cousin matches and this is where the magic happens. This is where the pot of gold is. And so this is where I spend all my time when I'm doing DNA research is in the uh, DNA cousin matches. All right, so I grabbed the screenshot, actually I kind of pasted this together, of all of the DNA cousin matches that I have. I realize you can't see that, but this is like I scrolled down, grabbed a, 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 a screen grab of it, and I just kept pasting it on here. There's a lot, right? So how on earth do we find the needle in the haystack? How do we find the DNA cousins that are going to help us solve our family tree? Well, first of all, one of the things that we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do this uh, briefly, but what you do is you find those DNA cousins that, you know, first of all, have matches in the part of the family tree that you are trying to solve your problem. Remember at the beginning we were talking about, let's identify what the problem is. Well, you know, once we identify who the DNA cousins are that can help us identify the cousins, then we go search their family trees. Okay. And we look for clues, we look for records, and we look for traditional genealogy that's going to help support our hypothesis. Here's a crazy example of all of our DNA cousins. We have no idea who who's related to who and how this is going to work. And so what I'm telling you is there is a great way, a strategy in which you can help figure this out. So what if you could group your DNA cousin matches into groups, say maybe by your grandparents. So this would be the father's side and the mother's side. So maternal, paternal. So that would be your mother's father, your mother's mother, right? Okay, so what if we could group our DNA cousin matches by that? Well, we can. And then we can go search their trees for more information, reach out to those cousins. We'll show you more here. All right, so we're not gonna get into a whole lot of DNA grouping. I have done a ton of videos about it. One of the things, if we take a look at our tree, we can then group our DNA cousins that descend from this side, the father's side, we can separate that out from the mother's side. Well, that's really helpful. We can then take it a step further and separate them out by, in this case, my great grandparent as the couples, right? And then we can take it a step further and color code them so that we can find them easily later. And then we can also go, as we learn more and we do more research, we can then start breaking apart the DNA cousins by each of the great-great-grandparent couples, okay? You can keep going with this. So what I did was I went and found the color code system on Ancestry and I created a color chart. And so I started colorizing the family tree based on this method. And so I've created this color coding system. And then what I did is when you're in your DNA cousin matches, now I'm going to show you on Ancestry, but it works the same on, on my heritage. They now have color coding over there as well. So I went and created, um, basically these are the, the surnames of a marital couple. So, uh, you know, Booth married Simmons and Booth married farther back of the line, Booth married Smith. We have a Davis Henley marriage. We have a Dunbar Rogers marriage. You get the idea. So I created this color coding system and then, you know, you go and you can start adding people to these colors. Now I'm not going to get into all the details of how to do grouping. There are several videos on how to do grouping. Okay. So then what we can do is we can take those color codes and we can apply it. You know, basically this is the tree that I created 
that I wanted to plan out my DNA color coding before I actually started color coding. And so I took Ancestry's DNA colors and I plotted them on the chart. And if you'll notice on the mother's line, all of the mother's side of the family are warm colors and all of the father's side are cool colors. That way, when I'm looking at my DNA cousin list that has been color coded, I can at a quick glance see if that cousin belongs on my mother's side or my father's side or maybe a little bit deeper into the tree, okay? So taking that tree a little bit farther and we can then kind of, as we're creating this color coding system, kind of have this stepping stone to our past. Because when we're looking at the color codes that we have created now on our DNA cousin matches, and I, I hope you're not getting lost at this point, but this is just kind of a basic overview. You'll learn about grouping when you watch the grouping videos, okay? So in this case, I've already grouped this cousin. It, it's three times I've grouped her and she's gotten three different colors. You can clearly see that she is on my mother's side of the family because all of the colors are warm colors. But if we go and take a look at the tree chart, you can see exactly where she uh, came from. So the orange color here is giving us this. She descends basically from this couple. Okay. Now she clearly is on this side and she is on this, this side as well, because we've got all of these color coded. So at, over time I have slowly added her. Well, she's a first cousin. So she, naturally she's going to descend easily from both couples here. Okay. Both great grandparent couples. Okay. But let's take this a little bit further. So if we take a different DNA cousin and as we're starting to work through it, we start to discover what side of the family she is on. And she is descending specifically from this great, great grandparents. These are the most recent common ancestors. You'll often see that, Re you know, common ancestors. Let's just start with that. You will see that she is descending from, so this is me over here. She is descending from this great, great grandparents in my family tree. And how do I know that? Watch the grouping DNA videos and you'll understand how that works. But by knowing that I first grouped her to this couple and then with more research, I grouped her to this couple. So this is showing me the path in which I am going up the tree. Okay. Let's take it a, a little bit different view. All right. So let's pretend that we are here on the family tree and we've discovered this third cousin match over here. And we've kind of figured out how this third cousin goes up the line to the common ancestors and then back down the line to me. Okay. Now we have a third cousin over here that we don't really know how that third cousin is related to us. So we do traditional genealogy. In fact, we're kind of doing their genealogy for them if we want to figure out how we're related to that third cousin. So we start working on the family tree and we start uh, doing more and more research and we slowly start to discover how this DNA cousin is related to us. Okay. And so that's kind of another sense. Well, at Ancestry, they actually show you what they call a through line, which would basically be this, right? It's kind of going up the tree and up and over and, and back down and down and down and down. And that's kind of the through line, but without all of the other mess that's in here. So on through lines, it's going to show you only the exact people that are in that line coming back down. Uh, whoops, I'm going the wrong way, but down to this other person. Okay. And in fact, it'll show you several cousins. If you go far, far enough back on your, um, through lines view, but keep in mind, and we're going to talk about through lines, but through lines is going to show you only for trees that have been built out all the way through. So does that make sense? The trees that like, if this cousin over here has built their tree up to this great grandparent couple. And this cousin has built his tree up to the great grandparent couple. And maybe you've built your tree up, but there's a lot of missing pieces in and around. 
through lines will show you that and as well as on my heritage's theory of relativity it's pretty much the same thing all right so visualizing those connections now here's an example on through lines my through lines and i know that might be a little uh, small to see but we're going to show you here in a second but this is kind of giving you the same sense right so this is taking from me on up my tree now there are several generations in here that i didn't open up several generations here and several generations here but it's taking us up to the common ancestor and back down to the other dna cousin right but there's a warning i have here for you please make sure that you understand that this is built on those other member trees if the other member trees are incorrect the through lines is not going to show correct so think of it this way think of it as let's pretend for a moment that you were going gee wouldn't it be great if we could take those dna cousins and take their trees and we could blend them together we could take those trees and blend them together and see one big tree as an estimate of what that tree might look like. Well, that's exactly what through lines does. It's an estimate. It is nothing more than a hint feature. It is not an exact tree. Okay. Now, sometimes it's right and sometimes it's wrong, but you just, as long as you understand that going into it, then uh, you won't have any problems uh, understanding it. All right. So uh, it is a combination of all of those other member trees. So just keep that in mind. Okay. So looking at the through lines, we can see that it, it takes us up to the common ancestor and back down to the other DNA cousin match. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of just a brief overview of the ethnicity estimates, the DNA cousin matches and what you can do with them. And here are some of the companies that have DNA specifically for um, genealogy. Uh, 23andMe kind of started as a company for health uh, information. Family Tree DNA, um, they have all the different tests that you can do, the autosomal DNA, the Y DNA, the mitochondrial DNA. They do those tests individually as well as you can really get into a very deep dive into um, DNA research at Family Tree DNA. Ancestry is the big gorilla. They're the ones who have the most tests. They only do autosomal DNA. And my heritage uh, is a company out of Israel, uh, but they are really worldwide as far as uh, what they have. They've got some great tools over there that nobody else has, the chromosome browser and stuff. They've got some really cool stuff over there. And then Living DNA um, really kind of focused, focused on British um, uh, genetics. And so they, but again, they have uh, folks from all over the world on there so let's kind of take a little bit more look at the comparison between companies here you can see that um, all of them have the autosomal dna which is primarily what we talk about that's the shotgun blast of the entire family that's where you get 50 percent from mom and 50 percent from dad then we have the y dna tests there's a few companies that do those that is specific to the father's line then we have the mitochondrial dna test which is specific to the mother's line okay they all kind of have different features. Um, Ancestry DNA is the uh, is one company that you cannot upload your DNA to. I believe 23andMe, you cannot upload your DNA to. So, you know, the thinking is, you know, if you can't upload there, then do your test at Ancestry DNA. And we'll talk more about that in a second. And then you can download it and upload it to all these other companies like MyHeritage, Living uh, DNA, Family Tree DNA. Um, you can download from all of the companies, okay? Some of the companies have health reports. These are things that are like, uh, give you um, information about maybe a genetic predisposition to Alzheimer's or various um, different health reports. Um, Ancestry has uh, since, I think, removed their health report. Um, My Heritage has it. 23andMe has it, and Living DNA has it. I believe 23andMe probably has the biggest health report of all of them as far as all the different things they test. They're all growing over time. So if you take a DNA test, and then um, they will keep adding different um, pieces of the health report based even using your um, previous DNA test. So you don't have to test again. So that's 
that's good information. So the prices vary, but they're usually most of them for the autosomal. This is for autosomal uh, testing. Most of them uh, are hovering around $100 uh, to test for autosomal. You can often find it on sale. I did not be, I was not able to find the sale prices on a couple of these, but a lot of times they're on sale during the holidays, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, Christmas. Uh, there's, you know, whenever they have a reason to, to find, you know, an excuse to go on sale, they will. Uh, here is how many tests from what I could find. And most of this information came from the ISOG Wiggy, but some of them came from the companies themselves. Um, I know that Ancestry has 20 million, over 20 million tests, uh, more than anybody else. 23andMe uh, was an early adopter for the health thing. That's why they have uh, a fair amount of tests there. Um, and MyHeritage is the one that has all of the really cool tools for chromosome browsing and stuff. That's a deeper dive. If you're just getting started, you're probably watching this video because you're new to DNA. So I wouldn't worry about getting into all the deep dive stuff. I would worry about learning how to get those cousin matches going and working for you first. So yes, you can upload to a lot of other companies. You can download your raw DNA and then upload them uh, to other companies, but sometimes there's a fee involved in that. Sometimes it's free. It just depends. Then you can go one step further and use something like Jedmatch. Jedmatch is a company where it's a gathering point, basically. It's a website where you can download your raw DNA and upload it to Jedmatch. And it, they don't do any other testing other than they use their algorithms to match you up with other cousins on uh, Jedmatch. This is also the company that does, that uses, if you opt in, they uh, will use that for um, criminal investigations and um, adoptees sometimes will come here looking for uh, missing parents. So if somebody has tested on Ancestry and somebody else, a DNA cousin has tested on say living DNA and the two of them uh, put their DNA uploaded to Jetmatch, then they might get a hit on Jetmatch. And Jedmatch has a free option and then there's also some higher level tiers that you can pay for, but it's very affordable. So long story short, I know that this is kind of looking for a needle in a haystack, but once you kind of get an understanding of how to group those DNA cousins, uh, I promise you it starts to, to get easier and you can start uh, slicing and dicing and, and separating that very long list of DNA cousins into groups along the family lines, and then you can start researching their trees for clues, records, hints, um, you know, but just don't take the other member trees for gospel without some record verification. So, but a lot of times it can lead you, uh, lead you to others. So I hope that was helpful. Um, this book, by the way, um, is incredibly helpful. Um, this is the Guide to DNA Testing um, and Genetic Genealogy by Blaine Bettinger. I will leave a link in the show notes for this awesome book. Um, I think it is the best book on the market for understanding a, a general, well-rounded, clean understanding of, of all the different testing for genetics for genealogy. Of course, you can find me on uh, genealogytv.org and uh, there's also the ISOG wiki. You can just Google that and find it. Uh, there's a lot of information there on that website. So with that information, I, I hope it's helpful and uh, it is time for you to dive in and, and see if you can't find some of your ancestors in your DNA. And so with that, it is time to say goodbye and uh, enjoy the rest of the videos that are on the screen for you now.